All right, welcome back live to uh, Guild Stadium. It's the annual Queen City Jamboree. Let's get a live play here. This is Central in Sauhegan. Central in green. That is Jaden Han airing it out, and that is complete to Joseph Ramos. Are they calling him out of bounds? Out nope, of they're bounds. bringing it back. So that was a great play. But uh, right now, Central is trailing Whoa. Sauhegan 18 to 7. So the defending Division II champs, the Sauhegan Sabres, looking pretty good tonight. Although we know that Central, according to Ryan Ray, is uh, down in numbers. Only 50 kids in the program. Uh, this year. We'll have more highlights coming up in the show, Jamie. That's the second sensational catch he's made out of bounds on this drive. So I think he's going to talk to his quarterback in the huddle. Throw it in bounds. Great catches, though. All right. Well, you know, so often in sports, we honor the heroes of the game after they're retired or no longer active in their sports. So tonight, we want to pay tribute to two of the best Granite State coaches. They are winding down their careers on the high school sidelines, but they are not done yet. 44 is the number to remember for two legendary New Hampshire coaches, Pinkerton's Brian O'Reilly and Bill Ball of Exeter. Each is starting his 44th season of New Hampshire high school football. I go year to year. I have to check with the with the boss on that at the home, home front. So it's a year to year deal. My wife has a lot to say about it. Coaching is, is what I've done my whole life. It's something I enjoy to do and, and I just couldn't wait to get back out to do it. This is Pinkerton football. Play like it. Let's go. Coach O'Reilly took over as the Pinkerton head coach late in the 1978 season, which means he's been the Astros head coach for parts of six different decades. He has 318 victories and 11 state championships, and at 68 years old, he says he wants to keep going. It, some people, they have to have hobbies. you got to do something, and I don't really have a lot of hobbies other than a little here and a little there, but... I enjoy scheming, I enjoy dealing with kids, I always have, I always will. It has to do with nothing else other than me waking up in the morning and looking forward to something like this. The moment that that changes, that's when it's time to step aside. Outstanding, okay, you almost had the pick there. Coach Outstanding. Ball became an Exeter assistant coach in 1978 and head coach in 1993. This is his 29th season as the boss with 221 wins and six titles the football complex at Exeter High School bears his name, William Ball Stadium. It's about building a team. You see where we are August 13th and where we end up the, last, you know, the first week in November. And, and building a team and people coming together and young people rising each other up. You know, not pulling them down but bringing them up. You don't coach this many games and even 300 for Ball. I really expected to have a championship year this year and 439 for O'Reilly without learning a thing or two. We asked each what advice he would give to his rookie coaching self back in 1978. First year, you're gonna to try to out-scheme everybody. You're gonna to try to do everything you can. And then the older you get, you forget one thing. It's all about relationships. It's all about coach-player relationships. If there's that relationship there, they will play and you will do well. It's just a game. They are not going to the playoffs. This you know, it, is their you, playoff for, We take it seriously for 24 hours after a, a loss. It just crushed. But it's a game. It's not life. And there are more important things in the world. But while we're here, let's play. Let's have some fun. And by the way, becoming two of New Hampshire's all-time coaching greats has come with mutual admiration. Each of these NHIAA Hall of Famers has the highest respect for one another. Now, I don't know of a better coach who after you play them in the regular season, you're in for a tough time the second time around because he will analyze, break it down, and make you not do what you want to do. Bill's, Bill's a great coach. Great friend, um, incredible job at Pinkerton Academy, and um, just have a great deal of personal admiration for him, the way the kids conduct themselves on and off the field. The, the decorum displayed by their entire football program. All right, who's in the next generation of coaches to take over? Guys that have been building legacies at their schools for a long time include Craig Cousins of Laconia, Tom Babayan of Pelham, Ryan Ray of Central Timberlanes, Kevin Fitzgerald, Nashua South Coach Scott Knight for sure, Bo's Paul Cohen, Kenneth Beckwith of Kennett, Milford's Keith Jones, and Paul Silva of Stevens. I also want to make sure I mention that both Coach Ball and Coach O'Reilly 
really praised their coaching staff, the assistants that have been there a long time as a key to their success. Didn't include it in the piece, but they talked a lot about those guys. A lot of those great coaches, continuity in the program is always a huge thing. And you mentioned some other coaches, uh, to add some other coaches to your list, guys like Jimmy Lozon, who's been at Londonderry for eight years, uh, Chris Sanborn at Plymouth, before he took over for the great Chuck Lenahan as head coach, he's been there several years now. Long he was time. an assistant under Lenahan for ages. Chris Childs has been at Lebanon, Lebanon High School for a long time. There are so many coaches out there that uh, are building great legacies amongst their programs. Some move around from school to school, but uh, great coaches nonetheless. All right, we want to catch, check out some game action. So I'm looking at the scoreboard here, see what's going on. Let's check in on the sideline with Jonathan Marshall, who's with the Central head coach, Ryan Ray. Yeah, here with, here with Coach Ray taking the time out to talk to me. Coach Ray, I think I heard you say earlier, this is like Christmas Eve. So what type of gifts are you expecting from, from your players on the field this season? Uh, right now we're getting a great, great effort. We're not getting a lot of great execution. Uh, so, hey, we just got the ball back, so we're talking about execution. Let's just see. Let's just see. Obviously, this is a dress rehearsal. It's a scrimmage. It's a practice. But we're back on O, so we're going to see if we can score in the last minute. 40 seconds. All right, Coach Ryan Ray, Manchester Central. Back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Jonathan. Coach Ray is going to think we're good luck because it was a Sauhegan fumble during that interview, and Central recovered. So there you go. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't even paying attention. So <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> hey, let's talk about another uh, defending state champion, and that's the Pelham Pythons in Division Three. The Pythons rolled through a perfect season last year. They defeated Stevens for the championship. It was their first title since 2008. And get this, they have to be favored to do it again. Pelham has about 45 kids in camp, including, check this out, 18 returning starters. Pelham is still loaded. Uh, right now, our skill guys are our strength. Uh, we have a lot of good skill kids. They've been working hard all off, off season and uh, see what they can do. Yeah, we lost a few key guys last year, but we're gonna reload, hopefully. Uh, one championship's not enough. We're still hungry. We're not gonna get complacent with what we got. We just gotta keep moving. I think we're gonna, we're gonna be a good team again. We're always been a good team. We've played with uh, these guys for three, four years now. So we all have good chemistry together. All right, so I went down to that first practice on the first day. I got out of the car. I was impressed with the athletes, the look of the athletes on that Pelham team. Watch out Division Three because they're good. Yeah, they graduated a couple of really good players, but they clearly have some underclassmen that were and good, too. That were big parts of that state championship team last year, and they rolled over some teams in Division and Three. And their starting quarterbacks, he's back. He's only a junior, yeah. so you got to deal with him for two more years, Pelham. And Tom Babayan, one of those great coaches. He'll have him ready to go again. For sure. All right, another long time New Hampshire football coach is back. In the Granite State, it's Tony Johnson. He won several state titles as the head coach of Bishop Girton before leaving for a stint at Worcester Academy. But now he's back with the Giants. We'll talk Bishop Brady football after the break. And later, the Goffstown Grizzlies came up just short of a Division I title last season. But many believe they're the team to beat this fall. Jonathan Marshall takes a closer look at what the buzz is all about in G-Town. We're back to Gill Stadium after this short timeout. <laughs> 